Hey everyone, how are you doing today? I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. Today's a big video. It's the year uh, roundup of all of the best things I tried this year. You guys, I struggled so much putting together this video. I feel like most of my collection is all my favorites because I get rid of the stuff I don't like. Like I pass it along to other people. And so when I look at my whole collection, I'm like, whoa, I love all these things. So picking out the things that I tried this year that are favorites was really, really difficult. There are some things last year that are still very much favorites. I did do a video talking about that. So I will link that below. So I am not going to be mentioning any of the same products that were in that video. These are all new favorites, or should I say new to me. Today I am drinking a hot eggnog. Every year when it comes around out at this time of year, I'm like, why isn't eggnog out all year long? But I think it's for the health of the general populace, right? <laughs> because it's just so good. And no, that, this whole thing isn't eggnog. I cut it with a whole lot of milk. <laughs> And I like to drink mine hot with some nutmeg sprinkled on top, and it's just a good thing. I better address the hat. It is the time of year where I start wearing hats in videos again. I just get cold, and I like to feel cozy. I'm definitely the type of person that will wear a hat all day inside. Let us begin with foundation. Let's start with the one that I'm wearing right now. So this is from Believe Beauty. This is a $5 foundation that you can get at Dollar General. It's wonderful. It's really good. It's got a satin finish. I wore just one pump of it today. You can see, well, maybe you can't see very well on screen, but like I can see in the mirror, I still have some breakouts poking through. So it's not full coverage. You can build it up a little bit more. I just, I don't know, I didn't feel like doing that today, but it's just a really nice satin skin-like finish foundation. It's unbelievable. It's only $5. It comes in a really nice glass jar. It has a very nice pump on it that doesn't get all gunky and weird. Like it's a nice pump. And this is one that when I do finish it up, I will probably repurchase it. I like this one a lot. I wear the shade Ivory. One that I think is very similar to that one is this one from Essence. This is the Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation. I don't know if I would call it a hydrating foundation. It's not, I mean, it's not drying, but when you see hydrating foundation, you might think of something glowy. This is not glowy. It's more of like, again, satin, leaning on more on the matte side. I wouldn't call it true matte, but definitely satin. And you can kind of change the finish of this depending on the skincare that you use with it. This wears so well. Oh, I didn't even say that about the Believe Beauty one. Wears very well. So does this one. I wear the shade number 40 neutral vanilla and it's just, I love it. It's so good and so affordable. I did try out a high-end foundation this year, a couple of them. The one that I would say is the best that I tried is this one from MAC. This is the Studio Radiance Face and Body Foundation. Face and Body has been out for a really long time. They recently changed it, however, to the Studio Radiance version of it. It's very glowy. In the summer, it's too much for me. Uh, in the winter, it's absolutely beautiful. It creates like a, a film, I guess, when you rub it onto your skin. That sounds bad, but no, it's really, really good. It's almost like a filter for your skin. It's gorgeous, obviously. It, it describes itself as a radiant sheer foundation, so it's not going to give you a ton of coverage. It's just gonna perfect your face a little bit, and it's beauteous. You can build up the coverage by using your fingers and that's when you're going to get the film. If you just use a sponge or a brush, you're not going to get the same effect as when you use your fingers. This is definitely one that's meant to use with your hands and it wears incredibly well. I know I've mentioned this before in my video, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself if you've heard this before, but I wore this when it was, I think it was close to 100 degrees. I was, it was hot. I was out all day. I expected to come inside to find this melted off my face and it was still on. It was amazing. So this I highly recommend as long as you know what it is that you're buying, you know. Sheer to light coverage, very radiant finish. And the nice thing about MAC is the large shade range that they have, so. Okay, let's talk about concealers. So the first one I wanna mention is the one that I'm wearing today. So this is the Glossier Stretch Concealer. This is another one that is not new to everybody else, it's just new to me. <laughs> this is the first time I tried it. It's what I'm wearing under my eyes. It is a very, radiant, very creamy concealer. And I've heard it described as like a tinted moisturizer in a pot. That's exactly what it's like. That's the type of coverage you're going to get with it. And I think that's what a lot of people get disappointed in. They buy a concealer thinking they're gonna get something really high coverage. This is not super high coverage, but I do think it gives more coverage than a lot of people give it credit for. The first time I used this, I used way too much. I really went ham in there and I was surprised. I was like, wow, this actually spreads and is covering way more than I expected it to. And I think this works best when you don't use too much of it since it is so emollient. If you put too much of it under your eyes, it will crease. I tend to let it sit under my eyes after I've blended it out for a little while before 
before I powder. That way I can tap out any creases and then powder and then I'm good to go. I don't crease for the rest of the day if I do it that way. But this is the type of product that I would have liked before I got into makeup. <laughs> because you can just use it to just rub your finger in, tap where you want it, and it melts into your skin. It's beautiful. It's great for no makeup makeup where you're not, you're not gonna put a whole lot of things. You just wanna conceal a few areas, and I love this. Kind of along the same lines to how it looks under the eyes. It's a very different product though. This one from e.l.f. I have really grown to love this. This is the Flawless Brightening Concealer. So it's one of those products that has a little clicky on the end and then a little brush. So you push it to come out and you brush it on like that. It is meant for brightening, so the shades all lean more towards like the color correcting colors, but I noticed this does the same thing for me as I enjoy from the Glossier, where just a little bit here, a little bit there, tap it out, it melts right into the skin, it just gives your skin a little bit more perfected look, makes you look more awake. I wouldn't use this all over like I do the Glossier one, I would stick to this mainly under my eyes or maybe the center of my face for a more brightened look, but this is really, really affordable and I think it's a really good formula. I really enjoy this. One more concealer, but a very, very different formula. This, so this one from NARS, this is the soft matte concealer. This is the shade Nougatine. I use this for covering up blemishes. It's a completely, completely different formula than the Glossier. The Glossier, you, it was very, very creamy and emollient. And the NARS one is more, in comparison, more dry. I mean, it's still a cream concealer but it does have that soft matte finish and it's amazing for putting on acne <laughs> i use this when there's something i really need to conceal like when i really am like oh boy that's terrible <laughs> i'll put this on underneath my foundation and it works really really well this also has a pretty decent shade range and this pot is going to last me forever so if you're looking for a good acne concealer, this is one that I would recommend. I tried this under my eyes and I didn't care for it. I've seen others, others use it that way. I think it's too drying personally for my taste under my eyes. Okay, let's talk about bronzer for a second. And if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, and if you're new, hi, hello, welcome. Um, you know that I'm not a bronzer person, but I tried a bronzer this year that I actually wanted to use every day. I think it's so good. It's this one from Flower. This is the Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer, and I have mine in the shade Sunrise. You can see, looking at it, that it looks really, really cool tone. It's got kind of that swirls of white in there, which is more like, that adds like the radiance to this bronzer. And while it is radiant, it's not like a highlighter. I wouldn't I definitely wouldn't go that far. And I know I'm wearing a hat, so it's probably hard to see, but I am wearing it along my hairline and on my cheeks here. And I think this is one of the most natural, gorgeous, blendable products that I have tried. So it's a sheer bronzer. You don't need to feel scared about loading up your brush, but you can build it up. So it's not one that will stay sheer where you can't get it to look like anything. You can eventually get it built up to the level of opacity that you want. Bronzer in general just kind of scares me when I'm out in the sun. I don't turn bronze, I turn red. <laughs> so bronzer always, I'm kind of like, ooh, I don't know. And while this definitely isn't red, there's just something about it that looks so natural on my skin. I love this. There's only a couple shades in this, sadly, this cool shade and a warmer shade. Flower should really, really come out with more shades in this formula because it is gorgeous. Okay, we have come to blush. You guys know how much I love blush. When I look at my collection and I was trying to pick favorites that I tried this year, I, I, I found it so stressful. <laughs> I like my blush collection a great deal and most of them I love. So it was very difficult to narrow it down, but I do have a couple formulas to talk about. This release from Milani I felt was such a cool standout release this year. This shade Coral Crush, by the way, is the shade. It's one that I only wear in the summer, but I wore it a lot this summer because it's amazing how something like this can really, just a pop of it on your cheek can really just wake your whole face up. So the formula is really, really melty. So sometimes when I see pots like this, I think it's gonna be a little bit sticky. That I don't mind that. I feel like that when I, the formula is a little bit sticky, it means it's gonna last pretty well. But this one's actually really, really melty. And this is a very pigmented blush. You barely need to, like I didn't need to swirl my finger in there and just kind of boop on your cheek and then blend out. Like it, it blends out so, so easily. I would recommend going in slowly if you're gonna get this color, for instance, just because it can be 
a bit intense if you accidentally get too much. But you can see there's a little bit of a luminosity to it, but it's not super, super glowy. They came out with a few different shades of this. I had to resist buying them all. They also came out with a blush palette that looks like this. These are very similar in formula to the singles, except I feel like it's not quite as pigmented. So if the pigmented thing, you're like, no way, this might be more up your alley, but it's the same melty, beautiful, blendy consistency. I could definitely label this as a favorite for this year. Also, I found this year that I was really, really drawn to putty textures in blush. I found that, that, that they really give kind of that diffused, blurred look to your pores. It's just something special. So I did try a few different formulas of the squishy texture blushes. One would be this one from ColourPop. I think that's the one that a lot of people would um, think of first. The, they're kind of classic, this the super, sh super cheek <laughs> blush. This is the shade Prenup and it's in a satin finish. But I was so happy when I tried this to find that this does the same thing that other kind of bouncy squishes, bl squish, squishy <laughs> blushes do for me. And that the f they're usually not intensely pigmented, so you can build them up a little bit, but the more you build them up, I feel like the more kind of diffused and blurred your pores look. Really, really pretty blush. Another squishy blush. This is the one I'm wearing today. My lid is taped on because this little interior part keeps coming off. Very frustrating. But anyway, this is the Glow Play blush. blush. <laughs> say the word blush. This is the Glow Play Blush from MAC. And I have the shade So Natural. So it is the blush I'm wearing today. It is very natural and yet so pretty. So again, with the squishy texture, I like to use a stippling brush with this one or with all of these actually. And there it just kind of looks like a bronzer, but you see it does have some nice radiance to it. And oh, it goes with so many different looks. It's so pretty. And I have to mention these blushes from Bare Minerals. These are the Bounce and Blur blushes. So Mauve Sunrise and Blurred Buff. Blurred Buff is kind of similar to the MAC So Natural. I don't know why, but this Blurred Buff I have isn't nearly as squishy as the other one that I have, but it's still a cream puttyish formula. And it does have more radiance to it, but you don't really see that as much when you put it on the cheeks. You can see, again, very neutral, but very, very flattering. Mauve Sunrise, on the other hand, is very pigmented, unlike most of these kind of squishy, bouncy blushes we've been using. And this is a really pretty, like, berry shade. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. I do have a blush collection video coming soon in which I can gush about all of the beautiful blushes <laughs> that I tried this year, but I would say those are definitely some highlights of my blush collection this year. Okay, so I kind of have the same problem with picking highlights. So I will link a video down below where I went through my entire highlighter collection along with the year of blushes. This was also a year of highlighters for me. This is the very first year I tried them. However, I have watched a lot of reviews over the years, so I feel like when I did finally pick out some highlighters to try, I feel like I picked out the winners, like some really, really good ones. So narrowing it down to one or two, I cannot, I can't. So I'll just quick speed through my favorite highlighters that I tried this year. One is this one from ColourPop. This is the Super Shock Cheek in the shade Lunch Money. This has, okay, so none of the highlights that I'm gonna be mentioning have any sort of glitter to them. So this, again, no glitter, really, really smooth. And when you put this, on your cheeks, it just creates the most soft, glimmery highlight. Very, very natural looking. This is so beautiful. I'm so glad I chose this shade. I know that some of their other shades do have glitter in them, but this shade Lunch Money does not. Something else from Flower that is so gorgeous. So this is the one that I'm wearing today. That is this Day Glow Highlighting Glaze. I have the shade Stunner. Again, I think this only comes in two shades. I hope that this is popular enough that they come out with more shades. But this obviously is in a balm formula, but you don't have to worry about it being too sticky. It's gonna have a little bit of stick to it. I mean, it is kind of like, it's a balmy formula, but it's nothing super sticky. And look at how it looks on my finger. It's really, really thin. So when you put this on your face, like it just creates another really, really natural, glimmery effect. Oh, I love it so much. Just juicy skin. That's what this gives you and I just love how it looks. I did try some powders that I love this year. I should say powder highlights. So this one from Nabla, this is their Skin Glazing 
in the shade ozone they do call this their glass skin finish glow powder and it does give you the whole glass skin look the shade ozone is like a bright kind of champagne color and when you blend this into your skin the part the pearls just become more and more polished until it looks almost like glass like it is absolutely gorgeous the hype is real on these i'm so glad i tried them another classic one that has been out for a long time so this is from mac this is the extra dimension skin finish in the shade double gleam i think this is probably the brightest highlighter that i have in my stash i don't like to wear it super bright that's just not what i'm after but it also can be used to create again a very soft beautiful glow so this is like a baked gelée formula. At least I think it's baked gelée. It's a very interesting texture. So anyway, there it is on my finger. You can see that built up, it can be very bright indeed, but it's just not thick and chunky. It's another really beautiful thin powder that, oh, just look at how that makes your skin look. Highly recommend. And I think the first one that I bought was this one from NARS. I actually bought this off of somebody else. She had super fair skin and this was a little too deep for her. So this is the NARS, and I'm gonna totally butcher this, Fort de France highlighter. So it's like a soft gold. This is one that I, I would call a, a pretty natural looking highlight. Oh, it's so, so beautiful. So like all of the beautiful shininess that's happening right now in my hand. I love this one, it's so good. My little stack of highlighters here, they were true favorites this year. I could not wait to use each of them in my Shop My Stashes, like constant rotation of them. Let's talk about mascara real quick. So the mascara that I'm wearing today is one that I just have open right now. I couldn't wear this one for you. This is the Ilia one because I finished it. This is a dried up tube. This is the Limit Limitless Lash Mascara. I'm sure you probably have heard people talk about this mascara before because it has quite the large following, but it has a beautiful, it has like an interesting comb so that you can really comb through your lashes and this creates an intense lengthened effect. This is one of those that when it reached the six month mark, I was really, really sad to retire. I think the hype is real with this one too. I did, I believe that video is up already, post a video talking about all of the mascaras that I tried this year. I tried a lot of really good ones, but I think this one was probably my favorite. Okay, let's talk about lips before we get into all of the eyeshadow. So I tried a couple lipsticks this year. I was just like, oh, it's so gorgeous. So let's talk about the one that I'm wearing. This is from NARS. This is the Dolce Vita lipstick. This is a sheer lipstick. Oh man, I tried to wash off all that highlight and now my hand is just glimmery. But you can see you can keep building it up, building it up, building it up until to get to that color that I'm wearing on my lips. Since it is so sheer, it melds really well with the color of your own lips to suit most people. I didn't realize I was buying such a favorite shade of many, many people. I found mine at TJ Maxx and I keep seeing it in there. And I keep wanting to tell everyone else in TJ Maxx, this lipstick is amazing. <laughs> Get this lipstick. It's so good. I'm gonna put on a little bit more. Mm. I love it because you can apply it and apply it and apply it. And since it's so sheer and such a nice thin formula, you're not gonna get like gunky lines on your lips, but the color, oh, it's such a good, your lips, but better shade. Yeah, definite favorite. And honestly, once I tried that, it kind of sent me down the rabbit hole of sheer lipsticks. So I tried one that, again, very kind of famous, I feel. So this is from Revlon. This is the Revlon Super Lustrous Shine lipstick. And I have the shade Sparkling Honey. Oh, this is so beautiful. It looks like it's just plain brown, but on your lips, of course, since it's so sheer, again, it works really well with the color of your lips and it is a gorgeous brown, honestly. But on my lips, it doesn't just look brown. It's really, really flattering and it is a very shiny, more hydrating formula. And I think that if you are into a, type, a product like this, that you would love this. It's beautiful. I did try a lip gloss formula this year that was so good. So I bought a little mini pack of these Tower 28 lip glosses. I have been using them up. I only have two left. 
I love these because they are like a lip balm. It's a hybrid type product with the shine of a gloss, but with the nourishment of a balm, they feel really, really beautiful and comfortable. Kind of that cushiony, slightly more thick feeling on your lips, but not really, really thick. Not like, not like the Fenty Gloss Balm or anything. And I find them to be just as nourishing or even more nourishing than actual lip balms I use. One of these little minis I used up on my lips as an overnight treatment and my lips in the morning were soft and flake free. <laughs> So I can highly recommend these. So these, obviously this is just the clear one. This little one looks like a crazy shade. This is the shade Fire, but again, it's a very sheer formula. So it kind of gives you the whole popsicle lip effect where it will just kind of tint your lips. And normally I wouldn't go for an orange like that, but in the summer, it's actually really, really flattering to wear this type of shade. I'm confident I will use both of these up in short order in the new year. Let's talk about eye products. I have a lot of them. I have a lot of them to share. So one that was definitely a favorite earlier in the year. I definitely want to include it. So this is a single eyeshadow from NARS. Now I got mine at TJ Maxx again. I think I got this little guy for $5. Since I liked it so much, I went on the NARS website to look and normally they're like $19. So I don't want to encourage anyone out to go spend $19 on a single shadow, but definitely be on the lookout for them at your TJ Maxx. So this is the shade Cashmere and I do have a little pan in it. I had this in my Duty Pan My Battleship project. I loved wearing this shade during that project. It is a beautiful taupey color. And one of the things I like about this, and this will be a theme you see through many of the things I mentioned today, is it has a gentle luminosity to it. It's not an intensely foiled shadow, but when you put this on your lid, I feel like it just looks really, really elegant and that color, very, very flattering. I've never tried a NARS eyeshadow palette, but if this is the type of formula in the palettes, I mean, let me know, are they the same? Because this is so good, I love this. This year, I also tried out the Revlon Color Cream Stays, which I'm holding one of the Maybelline ones. <laughs> this is the Maybelline Color Tattoo. In my mind, they're pretty similar. And I'm specifically mentioning the Maybelline Color Tattoo because I like this color so much. So this is the shade High Roller. They wear really, really well for me. So these are cream little eyeshadow pots. They have been around forever. I know a lot of people have used them as eyeshadow, eyeshadow bases or as just a single shadow eye color for a really long time. It is such a good color and again with like that soft luminosity not with a ton of metallic which I like my sparkles I mean I'm wearing very sparkly eyeshadow today but some days I just want something a little more understated there's a lot of different colors available if you find a color that you like I would recommend them okay let's mention an eyeshadow palette real quick so this actually I got later in the year I think it was October when I got this palette <laughs> But I could not stop wearing it. I wore it in a lot of videos. I was tempted to wear it today, but I was like, no, no, they've been seeing that palette a lot. <laughs> so this is the Lorac Unzipped palette. And this color story is, it's me. It's me. It, this is my color story. I think I still have some video of me wearing this. I'll put it up. And it's just very, very flattering. Color story, but also the formula, the mattes really really easy to work with they blend out beautifully and again with the whole smooth looking shimmers they're just so flattering on your lid this is the shade unbelievable which i will get into in a minute this is the type of shade that i've been into so much <laughs> so much this year it's it's i would call that a rosy shade but it's got enough brown in it to where it's not like a bright bright pink i'm really really scared that they are discontinuing this though this has been out for a really long time i just tried it this year and it keeps going on sale at ulta the last sale i saw it was really really inexpensive so if this is something that's been on your wish list i would say go for it I'm, I'm really worried about the future of this palette sadly but i really really loved it okay let's talk about what's on my eyes so one of my favorite discoveries this year were these liquid eyeshadows from rimmel so these are the wonder cloud liquid eyeshadows i'll link the swatch video i did down below i keep these out on my vanity and the, all the other colors that i purchased to use as crease shades they're my favorite formula and colors to put into my crease so if you haven't heard anyone talk about them before they're a soft moussey type formula and they're very sheer they're not super pigmented at all and they blend out extremely easily like look how easily that blended out and there's barely not much <laughs> still showing on my hand you can build it up to get more intensity just know that these are definitely just a wash of color 
but what I like about them so much is how easily that they blend out. They blend out like that on my eye. So I have a lot of times a struggle getting the blend that I want through my crease just with my hooded eyes and my eye shape. These, I literally just kind of tap it and it blends itself out. They're so pretty. They, they dry down to where they don't move. And they work really, really well as eyeshadow primers for other cream eyeshadows. They're not sticky or anything, but there's something about these that will help other formulas that tend to crease to not crease. These are some of my most used products this year and I love them. Today I'm wearing the shade Truffle Haze. Uh, through my crease. Okay, let's talk about some more single eyeshadows. So you guys know I have a fairly substantial single eyeshadow collection. One of the reasons I like having an eyeshadow collection is being able to dupe out new palettes that come out and like, oh no, I have a formula that I already like in that color, so I don't need to buy that palette. So I, I just love having singles for that reason. And that's kind of what I did with these three shadows. I felt like all year long. <laughs> so you guys know I love Sydney Grace. So first of all, we have the shades Turtle Doves and the shade Blondie. I'm so drawn to these shades that are in palettes. It's again with the whole rosy shades that have a bit of brown in them. So Turtle Doves and Blondie. Look at those. So pretty. I especially reached for Blondie quite a bit this year. Also, this year I received a very generous gift from a subscriber. She sent me a whole bunch of single eyeshadows from Glam Shop. We have to talk about some of these shadows. So I picked out this one because this is another shadow kind of like these Sydney Graces where I was using this to kind of dupe out Charlotte Tilbury vibes. I even had a video where I was duping out the Charlotte Tilbury quads. These are the three shades I use the most in those videos. This is the shade. Here, I'll just hold it up so you can see. Glam Shop is a Swedish indie brand. I hope you guys can see that shade name. But in addition to their beautiful shimmers, they also have really, really beautiful sparkly toppers. I'm wearing this one tapped over another eyeshadow today. We'll get to the other one in just a second. But this one, I have a video of me wearing this one all by itself, all over my eyelid. This is the shade Bella. But if you just kind of look at the finish that it has, it creates that gorgeous, like, wet look that I think is so, so special. I do feel like to get the maximum uh, benefit from these types of shadows, it's good to use a glitter glue. I forgot to use one today, and I'm already noticing happy little sparkles on my cheeks. I'm going to quick give you a swatch of those other two shades. Oh my goodness, I'll tell you their names here in a second because I cannot remember them. Oh, I hope that one's coming through. It's not really, is it? Well, I have a picture wearing this one. This actually is like, it's got purple in it. So I have a picture where I put this one over a purple mat and I just looked like I had mermaid eyes. It was so, so beautiful. This one's the shade that, <laughs> that's the name. And this one that I swatched, that beautiful sparkly shade is that. <laughs> probably put them I don't know if you guys can see them I'll probably put them in the description box I'll try to remember to do that so that you can see those are just some of my favorites of those glam shop shadows just absolutely stunning another sparkly topper that I just could not get enough of was the Haja toppers that comes in their little bento boxes I ended up depotting mine in an effort to get myself to see them more in my singles collection therefore I reach for them most often I had a few different shades I think my very favorite is this one this is from the orange blossom trio and this is the shade number two in that little trio and I have a serious weakness for these kind of peachy shades that have that intense, like wet looking look. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's so, so lovely. And in case you're wondering how that one compares to this one from Glam Shop, I guess I should just quick swatch that one too. So here's Bella from Glam Shop. Holy smokes. Probably more peachy and this one has more orange. But look at the, just look at <laughs> that. So, so pretty. Again, thank you so much to the subscriber who sent those to me. You know who you are, and I have enjoyed these so much. I have just a couple more single shadows to mention. So this is a matte from Sydney Grace. This is the shade Speedway. This was another one that was in a project, my um, Battleship project. And it took me almost 100 uses to hit pan on this matte, and it may just look really, really boring. And even though I was anxious to hit pan on it <laughs> for my project, I liked using this shadow so much. It is like a cool toned, almost mauve, not quite 
brown like it's in that shade a uh, range of like perfect crease shades i know sydney grace has a lot of shadows to choose from and it can be overwhelming if you like this type of shade speedway mm, excuse me speedway <laughs> i can highly recommend and the last shadow that i absolutely have to mention so this is the shadow that i'm wearing all over my lid under underneath that uh glam shop sparkly shade so this is from nabla this is the shade entropy and i like this for the same reasons that i like that nars single shadow it has a beautiful taupey tone but it has like all these little like micro pearls in it to where it doesn't look metallic it just looks kind of lustrous maybe a little bit wet on the lid like to me it looks like a cream shadow on my lid i just love that so so much i feel like i have got some of my very favorite favorite favorites now in the single shadow department. I don't feel like I'm going to need to buy as many as I have been the past couple years. At least I hope not. I'm, I intend to be slowing down with the, the single eyeshadow purchasing, but I really, really love the ones that I have. One thing that is not makeup that I absolutely must mention, and I don't have it right now because I used mine up. I'll put up a picture of it. It is the e.l.f. Cleansing Balm. I kind of have gone on a journey with cleansing balms, cleansing oils, trying to find the best one that doesn't sting my eyes, that actually melts off makeup, especially mascara. And some of them are really cruddy, you guys. Some of them are not good. The e.l.f. one is the best one I found, and I think the most inexpensive. It's amazing. I think it's 10 10 to 12 dollars if i'm remembering correctly it's unscented it doesn't have like all sorts of extra things in it like essential oils which you know i actually like essential oils but i don't want them in my cleansing balm because i'm rubbing my cleansing balm on my eyes <laughs> and i don't want essential oils in my eyes to me that's just like in a surefire way to create a burning stinging situation which honestly i get from a lot of cleansing balms the elf one was really easy on my eyes and it worked on most mascaras some mascaras are just hard to remove but once i use up my little stash of cleansing balms i'm going to go back to that one that one is really really good all right guys i think this is the longest i have ever filmed i see i've been filming for 48 minutes if you made it to the end thank you so much for watching this entire video you are a wonderful person <laughs> feel free to share down below what your favorites are i love favorites videos i love hearing what people's favorite products are so yes please do share thank you again so much for watching i'll see you very soon in my next video bye mm -hmm.